Great. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. Um, so thank you so much for uh, having me. Let's see if I can do the technology here appropriately. Um, are folks seeing the screen? Yes. Yes. Super. Okay. Um, so my name is Karen Joint Maddox. I'm at WashU in St. Louis, and we are um, more than ably represented in the room uh, by R.J. Waken, who's listed first there. He can, I can't see anyone in the audience, but can raise his hand or something. Oh, I see your hand. <laughs> hey, R.J. <laughs> um, so I'll be presenting uh, work that this entire group has been working very hard on, um, on all of our behalfs, but very much want to thank uh, my co-investigators in this work uh, for keeping it moving forward. Um, so I'm going to echo uh, what has already been said to some degree, which is to start with the sort of underlying fact that COVID created these incredible disruptions to usual care. We know that there was both the acute disruption and also some changes that may outlast the pandemic, you know, due to changes in sort of the structure of how we approach care, maybe the infrastructure that was built going off the past presentation um, so our objective was to use national Medicare data to understand these changes, at least to the degree that we can in claims data. We focused on uh, clinic visits, telehealth vis visits, emergency department and observational visits, and inpatient stays, which I'll go through in turn. But our real goal was to understand whether or not the changes in each of these sort of care settings and utilization differed, differed by rurality. We know that there are baseline inequities in access to care based on geography uh, that is um, both persistent and pervasive across rural areas and related to a series of different challenges between primary care and specialty care and tertiary and quaternary care. Um, and you'll see some of the differences in the baseline data that I show in a moment, uh, demonstrating really why the infrastructure and the utilization patterns in rural um, uh, do differ from urban and certainly uh, after COVID that's even more striking. Um, so we use the Virtual Research Data Center, which is an online uh, virtual research data center uh, for all Medicare claims. We have 100% um, of 100% files, meaning we have all fee-for-service beneficiaries across all of their care settings. Um, and I'll show you the data focused on heart failure, though we have since expanded this out more broadly. We looked from January 2018 to December 2022. You'll see some dips right at the end of our data um, because the 2020 the the um, things that start in 2022 but don't finish until 2023 every year as the claims flip need to be updated. So we're in the process of updating um, those December numbers too. So ignore any funniness uh, all the way at the right side of the coming slides. We considered the January 2018 to February 2020 period as pre-COVID. March to May as peak COVID for reasons you'll see in a moment, and June to December as sort of later COVID. I, I share everyone's hesitation of calling it post-COVID, um, but really a, a very different era in terms of utilization, as you'll see. We've done um, additional, more advanced modeling, which RJ can certainly speak to, but I'm going to show you the, the raw data, the basic ratios, the basic comparisons. Um, based on calculating utilization rates at the county month uh, level. It's actually beneficiary month that goes into the calculations with the months normalized to 30 days, and then comparing metropolitan, micropolitan, and rural areas. And for this work, we use the CBSA definitions. So uh, metropolitan is anything over 50,000 uh, core, core for a core-based statistical area. Uh, micropolitan is 10,000 to 50,000, and non-CBSAs or no core um, areas are, are areas that have even less than that in a core population. Um, so this is our first slide of results, and this represents the in-person E&M visit, so evaluation and management visits. This looks similar to a couple of the slides that you've already seen. Obviously, we're looking at Medicare patients, but the same thing happened to everyone. Um, where you can see uh, sort of a baseline going along until uh, the obvious dip at COVID and then a recovery. I think there are a couple things to take away from this slide that will be uh, to some degree reflected in future slides as well, which is to say that in the baseline period or pre-COVID, we see pretty different rates of use of E&M visits for urban and blue 
compared to uh, micropolitan or what we consider, you know, sort of fully rural um, in orange and tan. Um, for the most part, we did find that those groups ran together. I mean, 50,000 is, uh, is, is not a terribly high bar to get you to urban, um, but big differences between urban and rural and the baseline, again, sort of per, per beneficiary per 30-day month uh, utilization of e &M visits. The next takeaway after the obvious drop is that we really um, see that in the what we'd consider the later COVID period, that visits almost rebound uh, for the rural groups and uh, seem to rebound for the urban groups. And I'll show you numbers of that later, um, but this differs from some of the next slides that I'll show. So this is what emergency department visits look like in Medicare hmm. from 2018 to 2022. And you can see, again, uh, some baseline differences, in this case, actually higher utilization of, um, of emergency department visits in the more rural groups although small differences overall compared to the e &M groups, an obvious dip at COVID again, and then a, a, maybe a new normal, a new reset, a new steady state, where we see really quite a different uh, rate of utilization of the emergency department um, in all three groups, with again, the same pattern of utilization a little bit higher in the rural than the urban. Um, but you know the big difference here is the pre-post, not the within um, or not the between levels of rurality. When we look at observation stays, we see something quite similar, uh, even less difference between the groups in the pre-period, uh, again, a dip at COVID, and then similar to the emergency department, which, you know, this is sort of a version of emergency department care, um, a new steady state that does not approach the same utilization levels as before. When we look at inpatient stays, again, same issue, we see um, more utilization among urban individuals prior to COVID, the expected dip at COVID, and then a continued, if not widening gap between the use of inpatient stays um, in urban versus rural or uh, micropolitan or rural areas. And again, ignore that little drop at the end, that's for hospitalizations that haven't finished in December. Um, but uh, again, suggesting that we really never went back to uh, normal pre-COVID, and we may not, right? I mean, this is a couple years out, and we don't see any indication in these lines that we're trending back towards where we were before. Um, the next thing we looked at <clears throat> was telehealth e &M visits, and these are anything that's billed, so it would include um, audio and video if they were billed. Not all health systems build the same way for their telehealth, especially as things were getting up and running. But these are obviously, we don't know if it happened, if it didn't generate a claim. Um, but during this time, both of those were claimable. And you can see that in the pre-period, there was very little use of telehealth. If you zoom in really far, you can see that rural is the highest in that pre-period. Um, but as soon as the pandemic hit, the urban areas were, uh, were able to implement telehealth to a greater degree than the rural ones, not totally surprisingly. And again, we see sort of the development of maybe a new steady state um, out if you look into the 21 and 22 part of the part of the graph, um, where we see certainly lower than at peak, uh, but not back to baseline. So suggesting that we really have shifted into a new normal in terms of telehealth utilization, which is not equitable between urban and rural in terms of access. And finally, my last squiggly line slide. Um, if you look at total e &M visits, so if you put together those in-person and telehealth, which is very similar uh, to what Dr. Kaplan just showed, um, you can see that the gap between urban and rural has actually widened in the post, uh, later pandemic, post-pandemic period um, because of that additional use of telehealth and the not, um, not quite as big of a drop in the e &M visits, such that the gap between these groups in terms of their utilization of outpatient care has widened. So to put a few numbers on that, you can see here um, something that I think is pretty interesting. And I actually am fascinated by the prior graphs that were done as percents, because these are all done as rates. But we could have normed those to percents on the graph to sort of show the same thing. We instead do that in this table, which is basically just a ratio of um, peak to pre and then later to pre. And so you can see on the left half of the slide, um, the actually pretty consistent drop as a, as a proportion. So similar relative drop um, in e &M visits, ED visits, observation visits, uh, inpatient visits across the um, metro, micro, and rural, which is that they didn't start in the same place. Obviously, the ratios for telehealth are sort of silly. It's because the rates were so low 
um, and went so high that we have a ratio of 284 uh, in the urban areas compared with uh, much smaller numbers in micro and rural. And then total ambulatory visits dropping the least in the metro area during COVID uh, because they had the fastest and most aggressive uptake of telehealth as well as the lowest drop in e &M. If you then look over at the right half of the slide, you can see um, again, pretty similar numbers between metro, micro, and rural in terms of the relative change, um, but with a uh, minor overall or minor persistent drop in E&M visits in that first line, but pretty significant drops, you know, in the order of, of um, 15 to 20% across emergency department observation and inpatient visits. Um, again, the sort of silly ratios for telehealth, but much bigger for urban than rural. And then the total ambulatory visits actually higher than before because of that addition um, of telehealth. So our key takeaways um, are that, as you saw, COVID acutely disrupted in-person care utilization in all settings, though the effects were relatively short-lived. Um, the degree of drop was similar by rurality, but, um, but though the baseline levels were not necessarily the same. Um, the longer term effects suggest that total ambulatory utilization is higher than pre-pandemic, but that inpatient and ED utilization are persistently lower, and metro areas had the greatest uptake of telehealth. There are some, some important limitations to recognize. We don't have Medicare Advantage data. Our utilization data are per eligible person month. So if someone leaves Medicare for Medicare Advantage, we'd take them out of the denominator too, but we know that those populations can shift over time. Um, there is a potential healthy survivor effect. We know that sicker patients are more likely to die of COVID and during COVID. We think that that should decrease over time, of course, um, but that is a consideration. And of course, we can't observe the details of the clinical care delivered, only whether it was or was not. So in conclusion, uh, it appears that COVID may have actually reshaped the healthcare system in terms of patterns of inpatient and acute care use. And these widening, widening utilization gaps between urban and non-urban suggest the potential for worsening equity gaps. So we have some additional research to do in trying to sort out what that looks like and for which groups. Understanding barriers to telehealth uptake will be important to developing the policy solutions to address those, as, as we certainly think that's key um, uh, both now and in the future to protecting rural areas against further loss of access. Um, an ongoing work that we and others are doing with broader cohorts. So I said, we've broadened this out to a number of other groups, uh, different populations of interest. We'd like to subdivide this by race and ethnicity, by uh, whether or not someone's duly enrolled in Medicaid, for example. And then analyses of, of these groups, as I said, will help us understand more about what these shifts in patterns mean, uh, both in the post-COVID, later COVID era, and also sort of moving forward in terms of the long-term effects on our healthcare system. Uh, so thank you again to my amazing team of collaborators. Defer all difficult questions to RJ. I'll take the easy ones. I'm sorry to not be with you all, but I'm really glad to get to participate.